Sports to the Bone family. Greetings, 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 my viewers and subscribers. Welcome back, welcome back to the channel. Thank you all for checking this video out. I appreciate the love and support. So a couple of things that I want to zoom in on in this one. At the end of the game against Scotland, which we lost, former West Indies player Ian Bishop had a couple of things to say. I am basically going to be talking about five, I can't say five things that he, that, that he recommended as it relates to the selector or the selecting process where West Indies cricket is concerned. You're going to want to stick around to hear that. Also going to give you a quick recap of how the second test match of the Ashes series went. Australia, they were able to secure victory even though we saw a brilliant innings from Ben Stokes. Buzzball once again failed to overcome the normal test cricket um, strategies and, and, and whatever you want to call it. Also, we are going to be live this evening at 6 p.m. our usual time. Now, yesterday after we lost against Scotland, tempers were high, emotions were high. So I think today is probably a good day for us to sit down and have conversations, you know. People can send in their recommendation as it relates to what we need to do next. Know that we are, the emotion is a little bit relaxed. So, yeah, 6 p.m. later on today, we're going to be live. All right, let's get straight into it. So, Ian Bishop spoke about quite a few things as it relates to um, trying to improve West Indies cricket. So, I basically broke this down into five different parts. But you can call it on a one umbrella. Because this particular part where he was talking, he was really dealing with the selector, selectors, and how you select players for West Indies cricket. Right? So the first thing, selector changes is what he's calling for. He didn't call anybody by name. We know Desmond Haynes is the leader, is the head. He didn't call anybody by name. But he's saying that we need selecting changes. And under this headline here of selecting ch selector, uh, the changes of selectors, I have the other four points that he made. He's saying that one of the selectors need to be somebody who would have re who would have been recently involved in the white ball format. So that is what he said. One, the first thing, one of the whoever is appointed need to be somebody that was recently involved in the white ball format. Whether it's by coaching, managing, or whatever. They are in the white ball setup. They know what is happening because the game is changing. That is what he's saying. You might have a good knowledge of the cricket. You might see players that you think these players should technically be good enough to play um, ODI cricket or T20 cricket. But based on what is happening out there on the field, your assessment might not be right. Even though you would have been an excellent cricketer in your days. So he also spoke about um, saying, that, you know, as I said, white ball format is changing and you can't keep on using the same method. So that is the next thing that he spoke about, using the same method. And I would link it to the selectors and also, you know, the, the whole coaching staff. We are using a particular strategy that we are boundary hitting team. Right, and even though we consistently hit bound, more boundaries than other teams, we are still not winning. Right? Oftentimes we see we're in a in an ODI game, we go out there and we hit more boundaries than the next team, and we still end up losing the game because our regular cricket shots are not up to par. Rotating strike, piercing gap, not up to par. So that is something that we need to look at. Right? Um, we say we are a boundary hitting team, and it's the same, it's the same thing we say for T20 cricket town. The last two T20 World Cup, we see how that go. Right? So, even the last World Cup, when, when we won those World Cup and we said we were a boundary hitting team with all those big hitters, we had Marlon Samuels there doing his thing, anchoring the innings. I mean, he still cleared the boundary quite often, but you know, he was there to rotate the strike. We had people that can actually um, bat and rotate strike. And we had good bowlers at the, back then, right? Two of our T20 bowlers were ranked one and two. So, um, Samuel Badri and Sunil Narayan, they are regularly ranked one and two, right? So at that time, we, have, we had bowlers. We had Dwayne Bravo 
and these guys that could defend whatever we make. These days we don't have that. So the method has to change. You understand? The method, the method has to change. The, the other thing that Ian Bishop spoke about was um, needing somebody, well, it linked to the first thing that I said, somebody that coached in the, in the white ball format. That is pivotal according to what Ian Bishop is saying. You need somebody that has coached recently in the white ball format. Right? T20 ODI. And this, I remember we're talking about the selecting panel. You need somebody on there that they would have worked with the players, they know the players, even if they haven't worked with the players, they because they would have coached, you know, where the white ball, where white ball cricket is concerned, they know what to look for, they know what to expect. So they will see a player and they will say, listen, we are going to work with this player. He might not be doing this right now, but if we correct this in his technique, and I think we can correct this in his technique, he will more than likely produce this amount of runs or more than likely take this amount of wickets. Right? You need somebody that would have worked with the players recently to be able to look and say, you know. I mean, there are, there are cases where you, you can't find people who don't work with the cricketers and they actually can do a job. But, you know, I, I definitely get what Ian Bishop is saying. And he finished off by saying that, you know, they should be able to identify um, players that are better suited um, for the roles. So you need, you need um, the selector that is able to identify these players. And as I said, all of these five points basically link in one. You can call it that is one point bro um, broken down into, into different little pieces. So you need people that can identify the players. Because you were a good cricketer back in your days or because you're a good um good at organizing or coaching, you know, it's not always going to work. What 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 you used to do twenty years ago is not necessarily what is going to work right right now, based on how the game is changing. I mean the fundamentals of the game remain the same, but you still need people that are able to identify certain things, people that are around the white ball cricket and see how the pace is going, how it is moving. So I just wanted to bring that to you guys and hear what you all have to say. The comment section is open. You can just let me know what you think in the comment section. Finally, before we go, so the Ashes, the second Test match in the Ashes series, it um, came to a dramatic, well, I don't even know if I should say dramatic end, right? Australia, they eventually won the game quite easily. They won by 43 runs and... You know, we would have seen some brilliant cricket out there and according to some people, some controversial moments, right? We would have seen that Alex Keira run out of Johnny Bearstow. Johnny Bearstow decided that he wanted to go on a Sunday morning stroll before the ball was called dead. Man, walk out and crease and, 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 and thing. You understand? We saw that, that, that catch by Mitchell Stark that they say was a drop catch. Then we saw uh, Ben Stokes who made 155 batting hurt. You understand, but it just didn't work out for him at all. Um, so in the end, scores in the game, Australia 416 uh, and 279. England 325 and 327. Very, very good victory there for Australia. Um, Steve Smith, you know, was named the player of the match. Um, even Steve Smith has a dropping catch at a crucial time. He actually dropped uh, Ben Stokes in the latter part of the day. But, you know, it didn't, it didn't end up hurting the team too tough. So, yeah, man, it, it, it definitely was a, good, was a good game. Those who are saying test cricket is not alive and well, I don't know what type of test cricket you are watching. But this one was very, very entertaining. And as I said, you know, Steve Smith walking away with the man of the match. And um, Australia, what even made the victory more impressive is that they were able to do it without um, their frontline spinner. Nathan Lyon wasn't able to bowl. You understand? So that even made it more impressive that the seamers were able to put down and, and, and bowl. And even on, even on day five on a, on a worn out pitch, we saw the bowler still bowling 90 miles per hour, 86, 87, 88 miles per hour. Right? So, you know, these guys are serious about their cricket. So, just wanted to give you a quick recap on that. So, we're going to leave it right there for now. But remember, later on today, we go live. Big up on yourself.